Wave and air conditioner once again, simultaneously. Welcome to another off-grid lithium setup, quite literally. This one in a Lotus off-grid 23-footer. I don't know where to begin. Um, it's huge, this one is nuts. We've managed to squeeze so much solar on the roof of this 23-foot Lotus. Um, you guys are gonna freak out, it's huge. I freaked out when I, when I was measuring it up and me and Riley are working out what we could and couldn't do on it. So this one has very minimal shading issues on the roof. As far as roof space concerned, I'm able to squeeze a lot on this. Now we've used three Victron solar controllers. So just to give you guys a little bit of a teaser, two of them are the 50 amp model and the other is the 30. So I've got three separate solar systems on the roof of this running simultaneously networked together. This thing is absolutely a beast and I'm gonna call it the beast because that's what it is. This thing has so much replenishment power, it isn't funny. 50 from the vehicle. This thing will pump in well over 100 from the sun. Easy. That is like so much power. It's enough to keep up with the air conditioner, run the air conditioner at the same time, run as many devices as you want. These guys are seriously not going to run out of power anytime soon. They've got so much power to be able to put in. It's, it's crazy and use. Battery capacity on this one too is absolute next level. Over 12 kilowatt hours. So that's three of Paul's Mercury's. Now these are the Mercury 330's. He discharges and fully charges his batteries upon his testing. And he was able to squeeze about 340, actually over 340 out of each of these batteries. So that's like 1,020 amp hours, guys. That's huge. This system is like, these guys will never run out of power. This is a 12 volt compressor fridge. They can leave that on indefinitely. Like there's so much power in this thing, you don't have to worry about power at all. There are, Three solar controllers, like I said, all in unison, all tied in together. And we've also gone for a different monitoring system on this. And the reasons behind it um, are a little bit different than most. This van came with an inverter. It was a 3000 watt Red Arc inverter, a great quality product. And they've proven themselves over time. So 
instead of going to another brand of inverter and redoing the whole system, we have just obviously rewired it so it functions properly. And we're using that, but the monitoring side of things needed to be done secondary. An old mate wanted to monitor each of his solar arrays individually, as well as his um, 12 volts separately. So we've gone for the Cymarine uh, Pico screen, which is a really good screen. It's on all of your Anadrive stuff, um, really good stuff there. I've personally got one and I love it. Really easy to program. You've got individual shunts for each item that you wish and you can program it. Here is the SCQ50, and this is a quad shunt. So what it is, is there's four individual shunts in built in this. So it's able to run individual items. And what we've done is we've gone three solar controllers through it and the master 12 volt. So up on the screen, which I'll show you guys in a second, old mate can see individually what those things are doing. So I've, or we've labeled um, one of the 600 watt arrays on left-hand side solar. And then we've gone for right-hand side solar for the other 600 watts. And the three 160s, which are the 480 watts, that's on the front. So we've labeled that, you know, front solar. So you can individually see which array is giving him the best power at any given time. Of course, you've still got Bluetooth, so you're still able to log on to each individual item if you wish. Uh, but this is just easy to see because it's right there. Uh, very clever little setup. If you don't have the full Victron kit out and you've got an, another brand of inverter, I uh, highly recommend the Cymarine stuff so you can you know, customize it, which we've done. So we've got the, the big Cymarine shunt down here as well. So that's able to monitor everything as a total. Uh, because the inverter is the 3000 watt, it's going to pull, you know, 240, you know, 50 amps or something. So it can flow that quite easily. And we've obviously gone for all the double up on the 50 mil cable in this one. So like you guys know, 250 amps continuous discharge in these batteries from 100% to zero. So that's if you put a 250 amp load on the one battery, it will run perfectly all the way. None of this five second peak, 10 second or 20 minutes. No, it'll run that full 250. So... If you count, there's 750 amps of continual discharge capability in this. This inverter will never ever hit those numbers. It doesn't need to. It actually won't even exceed the limitations of one battery. And that is why I always push for these batteries because of that ability for one battery to run the system for any unknown reason. If, if, a, if a battery fails, if you're out in the bush and you over discharge one and you know one shuts off, the rest of the other battery can actually take the load of that inverter at full song. So there we have it, guys. Now, this, um, this setup had the batteries. So I had two AGM batteries behind the wheel. Um, and, you know, it's 70 odd kilos behind the wheel. Obviously, it's been relocated to this spot now. So it's a lot better balanced because the wheel arch is right here. So it's a better distribution of weight there. The inverter on this one was originally fitted here. Then he got it sorted out because it was too far away from the batteries. It got relocated to over there. Um, we're going, going to keep it there because it's only actually about 1.2, just over a meter away from the batteries. We've spun it around and brought it closer. So the main positive is here and here on the end batteries and it runs straight through to that sort of location there, right next to this fridge. Now I've got it ramped up right now. I've got the air conditioner running on hot 26, 25. It's going flat out. We're pulling about 90 odd amps. It's, you know, it, kind of cycles up to 110. You guys have seen my other videos. The Harrier Pluses will suck a lot of energy on heat. That's why there's a gas heater in this and that's why we'll never do it. But I'm doing a test on this, guys. I've already made my toasties and, you know, pulled some big power. I've done the test, run the microwave because it's crap weather in Adelaide. Once again, I've been here for three days. Yesterday was okay, but we weren't finished. Today, there's a little bit of sun out. Hopefully it comes out for you guys. I want to suck some energy out of this thing. So we're on 86% as we speak because I want to test this solar. Yes, we're in the bottom of winter, but with 1680 on the roof, let's see what numbers we get. I'm like, I'm super excited to see what we get. And we can actually individually see on the fly up on the Simer industry what each array is doing. So it'd be interesting to see that. Um, he's going to pull it out. I'll try and face it kind of north. We're in a bit of a tight driveway. I'll get him to face it north because the front edge is on a on a Lotus. It's a bit of a slope. So if we can get that facing north and then we get some decent sun maybe on this array, it's, you know, what, one o'clock in the afternoon now. Who knows? Um, if that sun pokes out, we might actually get some big numbers, which I would love to see. So we would be awesome to see that. Um, venting on this. So we've got like the triple vents. We've done venting over there. We've got a big gap at the rear for the Red Arc 50 at the back here, and that's running a side Anderson plug. So that's unregulated solar. Not that you're going to need it. Not 
with this amount of solar, but here's the ability to plug in another 600 watts, guys. Ludicrous. So if you had, you know, two massive 300 watt fold outs or blankets or whatever that people have and you plugged it in and, you know, this sun comes out, I mean, that's over two kilowatts. That's like two and a, that's crazy. You never ever need that sort of charge, but hey, it's there if he needs it and he can run it. So essentially, if this was all electric, you would be happy days with this setup. This is actually bigger than most um, sort of systems you can buy off the shelf that comes out. And that's why we do these. This is customized, guys. Completely made for this customer, for his needs, at his request. We originally only quoted him on about 800 to 1,000. Um, and I was super wrapped that I was able to fit the larger panels on the front section and move to another, um, another panel at the rear. It did come with three 170 Voltec panels, which were a great panel. Um, but where they were, um, if I would have to tie them into one regulator, and then I could only add another 600 on top of that, and then my 480. The numbers were nowhere near what we've got now. This is at its max. I cannot squeeze another inch of solar on the roof of this. Um, it's it's huge. I can't keep going on about it. I'm just I want to test this thing. I'm like super excited. Get this thing out of the shed. Pull it out. We we'll see what it can do. We're an 86% still. Um, I might try and draw this down to about 80 before we get it out there. And we'll see how fast we can pull this pull this 20% back into the battery. Uh, see what we get from the sun. Old mate's um, vehicle, I've already checked it. And he's, um, this is another thing about being on site that I can do. I always look at the vehicle's Anderson system, especially because of the Red Arc 50 that's in this. It has the potential to draw well over that on the input. So if you've got an existing Anderson plug in the back of your vehicle, I'll always make sure it's on, number one, it is on thick cable, like 6BS minimum, absolute minimum, short as run as possible, MIDI fuse to suit the cable, and uh, a direct line. But also, more importantly, where it comes from. If you guys have a secondary battery system, right, in your vehicle, and you are pulling that Anderson plug from the aux battery in the vehicle, and the Anderson plug is running a DC charger, your aux battery in your car will be dead flat. That's even if this kicks in. The Red Arc 50 needs a higher voltage to kick in. You guys already know it, look up the specs. It'll rise up, I think it's 13.3, turns on, happy days, and then it shuts off at about 12.7, 12.8. Don't quote me exactly, it's, the, the turn on voltage is higher, and then the turn off voltage is sort of that 12.6, 12.7. So when that DC charger turns off, right, it's only gonna turn off under load, so that would be thin cable in the vehicle and or that line that ends the plug in your vehicle is coming from the aux battery. And what's worse, if you've got an aux battery in your car that's getting charged from a, I don't know, a Red Arc 25 amp DC charger, so you're pumping 25 into that battery, and then the Anderson plug on your back of your car's coming from that, now you've got a 50. Well, you can see the problem, you're gonna be trying to pull all this power from an Anderson plug that's attached to a battery that's only receiving 25, it's gonna suck it dry. But like I said, it's probably gonna cut out before long. So the rules are simple. Whenever you go the big current setups and the high, high end stuff like this, the Anderson plug for the DC charging line must have zero and absolutely nothing to do with anything associated in the vehicle but the starter battery. It needs to go direct to the starter battery on the thickest cable that you can run, 6PS is minimum, it's fine, and you will not have a problem. Guaranteed, that's how it works. Obviously, if you start going, you know, one, two or three DC charges, depending on your alternator, if you load it up too much, well, that's a whole new set of um, dramas there. But generally speaking, a 50 amp DC charger from an Anderson plug installed correctly off of the starter battery in a vehicle is fine. We don't have a problem with the ways we do it, and when we do do it, they always work fine. So this one has 8 BS, all right? And I know straight away that if I plug it in, it'll turn on, but then as that load increases and the amperage increases, the voltage is gonna fall real quick, and that'll shut down, all right? Which is what we're gonna test out the front. Hopefully I can get that on camera for you guys. So this, um, this inverter was wired up uh, actually correctly. <laughs> It's the Red Arc Kotec inverter, so it doesn't have a transfer switch on it, but what old mate has done, he's actually put the old manual, you know, break before make switch. So in one position, inverter, off, and then mains. But here's the kicker. The battery charger GPO, right? Your mains power outlet for the battery charger. And the fridges GPO are before the inverter. So he's done it right. Whoever did it understood the system understood what it means to have a changeover switch with an inverter, and he's actually wired it up correctly. Luckily enough, the hot water service on this is instantaneous, 
so he doesn't have to worry about a boiler gun cutting straight off her batteries and it's a compressor fridge so it's neither here or there this will run off 12 volt the whole time anyway so realistically the only device that is not from the inverter in this setup is the gpo that is under the fridge but the battery charge is plugged into it so the battery charger so that way if he's at the caravan part the second he plugs in the mains charger turns on irregardless of what happens up here so it's 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 done properly and there we go the remote for it the uh, red arc is in the factory position up here so it's easy to get to the Cymarine screen we have blocked off where the old uh, projector solar controller was and we've you know neatened it up so it's nice and tidy we've covered up all of the ugly holes and we've just made this thing like off-grid like this is a proper lotus off-grid now i'd be very very wrapped to take this in the bush confidence in power these guys are just gonna run out of water and that's probably it if you were if you were to park up by a nice stream somewhere with good fresh water you would be indefinitely free camping and this is this is a setup that i'd like this is this is about the power size that i'd really love to have guys so i'm like really happy so there we have it guys just to recap 1020 amp hours of custom made power pool mercuries there's three of them there 340 amp hours each all tied together at 12 volt we've got three victron smart solar controllers two of the 50 amp models and one of the 30. both 50s are covering two separate arrays one 600 array here the other 600 array here on this side and the 30 is taking care of the 480 odd up the front here we've gone for the Cymarine setup for the display and all of the monitoring of all of the devices individually inverter 12 volt and all of the um solar controllers and the dc charger as well red arc 50 amp dc charger with side solar input so up to 600 watts of solar can be plugged into this if needed and 50 amps will come from the vehicle so 600 odd watts will come from the vehicle while he's driving lots of power 6 1680 watts on the roof and red arc 3000 watt inverter running on everything microwave air conditioner outside i just made some toast uh, toast before all of it you know the element on the on the stove there on the thetford that'll run your induction cookers your hair dryers your washing machine in this the whole lot will run at the touch of a button bang you're done happy days enjoy that setup guys i'll try and get this sun happening for you fingers crossed got the dometic harrier plus running at the same time as using a toasty maker, we're pulling nearly 250 odd amps. There we go. Look at the time remaining. <laughs> Beautiful. So I got that running and a couple of more yummy. She's a Vegemite. Yeah, she's, see, she's definitely a tough one today. I'd love for the sun to find its way in one of those blue patches, but I did see 30, 29 on each of these arrays. So I think the best we're gonna see on it is that. I'll try and capture it on the camera again, guys. But we are now out in full sun, like bottom of winter. We've got the front array here, which is a 480 watt system. We've got a 600 watt system on the left and then the other 600 on the right there. Now they're running through individual shunts there. As you can see, you can see what's happening on each shunt. The main here is the total. The coloring is very simple with the Cymarine setup. Blue is charged, so that, that's above, all right? And anything yellow, that's power taking out. So if I turn the master 12 volt on, which is up here in the Lotus, if I turn that on, all the lights will come on. And then you're gonna see something come up under, there we go. So five amps is running from the 12 volt at the moment. So that's a separate shunt, which is down there, labeled and you can see it. So each of these is monitoring an individual circuit. So we've got main 12 volt, a solar 600, a solar 600 and a solar 480. And then all of the other circuits are down there. They're all sort of through a master 12 volt um, as one. And at least I'll make can monitor anything that's happening. It's very simple to see what's going on with this. So the main shunt takes care of everything that can't go through, because this is only a four channel shunt. You can add more with these if you want, but you know, it makes it pretty small on the screen, but I'll make just one of this setup, so it's very simple. So see how this is on the cusp? See the color flickering there? So 
That's ramped up. How crazy is that? Oh, there we go. Look at the 26. Look at the solar, guys. The sun's coming out. Oh, you add those three numbers together. All right. So what's our total? Network total on the Victron app. That's over a thousand. Oh, not bad in winter. You got to be happy with that. So I've just logged onto the front one here, guys. So, but because they're networked together, as you can see, this number. Try to keep the glare away. Where is it? There, that number there. See over a thousand watts coming from the system on the roof now in winter. There's a monster system on this, guys. These numbers are, you know, you, you guys that have house solar, you know what I'm talking about. In the winter, it's, it's always diminished. Even when the sun comes out, the sun is quite uh, quite low in the sky, and this is the result. But hey, I'd be happy with that number from from a caravan any day of the week. We got big charge coming here, guys. So if we go to the other screen. This is the Cymarine setup, so you see your time to charge. We're actually charging and running the air conditioner, guys, right now. And look at that charge rate. All right, the inverter's on. The air conditioner's on. It's on 28, it's on hot too. Blowing out hot air. So I'm running that on heat and putting in some big charge at the same time. Very happy. So it's it's a very straightforward setup um, with the Cymarine. So this is what you've used and what's remaining. Okay, so there's your percentage there, and there's your amp hours remaining. So if you program it up correctly, um, this is what's going to be shown. And you can go through all the settings so you can see everything. Your, your time. We've got temperature on this as well. You get your barometer. So we got your temperature. That's for the case down there with the uh, with the cooling. So that's a, we're able to see the temperature in that case. Pretty straightforward with what to uh, expect here, but. Still got a little bit of programming to do on it yet. Um, I thought I'd just do this video while we were with a little bit of blue sky around, dappled light, overcast-ish, you know. I just wanted to be out here with more of a chance to grab it and we were able to do that. So I'm really happy to be able to see these numbers, especially in winter, guys. Very happy. So over a thousand, we cracked a thousand. I'm happy with that. Very stoked with this setup. And you're not going to run these on heat. That's why this thing's going to gas heat it. But I'm always doing the examples for you guys to show you what things draw from my systems and what they can do and how it works. So there we go. We'll shut that down and might stay out here for a little bit and see what percentage we can get this up to. I'll take some snappies and see how far we get with it. But I'm really happy with this thing. This is an absolute beast. Oh yeah, forgot about the inverters. This is already fitted and this was actually done right. You guys see my other videos where I speak about them doing it wrong. So you got mains and inverter, so the two-way switch. So obviously left when you're on mains power. It doesn't matter if the inverter's left on because it's a break before make and nothing will come through. And the GPO for the uh, down there, which is the one running the fridge and the mains charger is before the inverter. So even so as soon as we flick it over to there, the mains charger comes through. Whereas right now, if you were to put mains into the side, like plug it in, nothing will happen. It, it's it's perfect. It's that magic infinite loop of power that disappears won't happen so this inverter is wired correctly guys very happy with her whoever wired this up they did a good job sun's come back out for a little bit ah it's disappeared again it was just over 32 on each of these hopefully it comes out again i'll keep filming i'll keep rolling and just put the air conditioner back on on heat It'll pump up to like a hundred, which it's running at now. So, like I said, you guys, the orange is pulling power, so that's what you're pulling from the batteries as a total. That's the 12 volt, and this is all the charge rates coming in. So we get nine, ten watts of solar total, 900. Yeah, I think we've had our day today. But hey, these are big numbers, guys. Like, look at this. You'd be ha you'd be happy getting these numbers in winter any day of the week. That's stupendous. Eight ninety solar. That's about right. I think we've got it. They can be a bit bit tedious to set up at begin with, especially if you've got multiple shunts. But once you get it set up, that's happy day. So you can see the main twelve volt channel is pulling power, hence the color. The main shunt is now, we are now putting in power. All right, see the color? All right, so it's blue. So we are putting in, that's the charge rate going in. So if you were to add that up, add that up, add that up, minus that will give you that number. Now we're all good. So if we go back to the main screen, 
the one that I like to see, which is that one. We'll go, so we're free camp, we'll turn the inverter on, wait for the beep, and that current will drop. Put the air conditioner on, it's bloody hot in here now, so I'm gonna go, we'll go power, we'll go cold. We'll go to 16 and we'll ramp you up. 16, three. 880 odd watts. So knowing the Harriers will probably be in a slight current draw. Fridges on, lights are on. But let's just see what we can get this to ramp up to. I'll try not to edit this guys and see if the focus works. 48.2, 48.2. We'll go to this screen and we'll see if we can get this to drop, which it should, once that compressor starts to ramp up. Once it drops, we'll see if we can get it to change color and obviously go into discharge. There it is, that just kicked in. So take notice of that, that bottom number started to drop. As this ramps up, it should drop even further. So that's the last number. That's exactly what's going into our batteries as a final figure. You can hear it ramp up. So the Victron's showing me 870 watts. That's why I keep saying to you guys, these are more efficient on cooling than they are in heat, of course. So we're producing 800 and 870, 870 odd watts. Fridge is on, everything's running. We are charging while running that on flat out 16 at the moment. This is still blue. Let's get it close to zero. Let's see if this starts to change color, it would be good. Now it'd be good if the sun would disappear for a little bit. Still, it's not full sun, but it's, you know, like low cloud. She's definitely blowing cold air. Yeah, all right, cool bananas still going. Oh, let's see if we go, getting close to it now. Nah. We'll see if we can get this to change over to uh, discharge and then it's going to log time remaining. That's a bright sky at the moment. What have we got? Yeah. <laughs> How good's that? Running that air conditioner, guys, we're putting in 12, 13 amps on top of running it. Like, that's just ludicrous. And we're in winter. <laughs> Heaps of solar. FS front side, LHS left hand side. RHS right hand side, main 12 volt and main shunt, that's the master. So I don't think I'm gonna get this to drop any lower. I'll probably have to log onto the solar controller and let's shut one down, hey, let's do that. So we we'll go to battery, we'll turn one off and we'll actually show it in live real time. So if we go to, all right, so the top one should shut down when I flick this little switch. So let's do that, let's flick that off, charger enabled. I'm gonna hit okay and that top one should disappear. Look at that, on the money. Gotta love the Victron stuff, guys. So now, see the color change? Main shunt has turned to this orangey yellowy color. So now we're actually pulling 11 amps. And there we go, now we're logging, beautiful. And the time remaining is coming up as well now because we're obviously in discharge. Voltage is right there. This is the remaining amp hours remaining. Um, it would have been about 80%, guys. Um, I've done a manual reset to 100, but that's neither here or there. It's not important right now, that will get Calibrated once these batteries fully charge again, but now we'll um, we'll turn this back on So charger enabled and we'll see that jump back up once the tracker comes back in Let's go back to the other screen and watch it. There it is it instantly cut back in. We'll try and turn one of these off and So I'll log out log on to LHS or RHS Shut down that one All right charger disabled there we go, the RHS just stopped. See the right hand side solar just dropped off and we've gone back into discharge. Now if I shut down all the solar controllers, 
obviously you're gonna lose all of these three lines here and you'll be completely in discharge. So we'll turn you back on, charger enabled. And there we go, the tracker is tracking and that will ramp itself back up once it finds its happy voltage and there it is. Beautiful. Happy days guys, enjoy that setup. Hopefully I've been a little bit a uh, bit informative on this one. Um, it's a lot to go through, but it's not like the usual setup where I use the Victron inverter and or the Enerdry, but it's the same thing. It's a Red Arc inverter, which is down there. Hard to see it, but down there with a the active ventilation system going on. There we have it. Cool. Hit me up with some questions, YouTube messages you know drop me a like and a subscribe if you want to see any more of these videos this is done live on site guys i'm i try not to edit too much just kind of chop it and change it to a little bit to make it easier for you but um you know this is me doing the job with the offsider so this is the real world this is what you get there's no smoke and mirrors here what you see is what you get happy days enjoy mm -hmm.